Hi, everybody, and welcome back. We are finishing up our chapter six on forces, and we're in the home stretch right here <coughs> with a, uh, a concept that we call translational equilibrium. Now, that sounds like a big and scary uh, physics word, but it's actually quite a simple concept. Uh, the whole condition upon which translational equilibrium um, exists is the fact that the net force on an object <coughs> or a system uh, equals zero. So if net force equals zero, and we know, of course, that um, net force equals mass times acceleration, then that means the acceleration uh, must be zero. All right, it's not accelerating. So uh, you could say that it, it, it could be at rest. All right, that's certainly true right here. We could say that the system is, is at rest. So um, look at any object on your desk, all right, say your calculator or something like that. It's sitting there. It is a translational equilibrium. There's no net force on it because it's not accelerating. Or we could also say, excuse me, I still have a little bit of a hoarse voice. Uh, we could also say that it has a constant velocity. Now, sitting there at rest at zero, it certainly has a constant velocity of zero, but it could be moving with a constant velocity at, at some non-zero velocity. All that it means is that it is not accelerating. Um, objects at rest stay at rest. Objects in motion stay in motion. And so um, an object with a constant non-zero velocity it can have no net force on it and still be moving. So the condition is that the net force in any direction, x, y, or otherwise, all the net forces in any direction have to equal out to be zero. Now that's actually going to make it pretty easy for us because um, these objects are not accelerating. So that's one less thing for us to deal with. So let's take a look at an example right here, and we'll, we'll see how we can apply this. All right? Right here we have a flower pot hanging from, it, it looks like one wire coming down and going over um, to the wall, but it's actually two wires. It's um, one wire attached here and then like tied on, and then another wire tied and attached to the wall. So, so you can't really expect the, the flower pot to slide that way along the wire because it's, it's two separate ones, okay? So each wire, what is it doing to support the flower pot? Well, it has tension in it, right? It's, it's um, it's attached to something that is providing a supporting force up here and down here, but that force is transferred through the wires to the pot. And so it's really those wires that have the tension in them that we want to find out um, what the tension is. Find the tension in each wire. All right, so instead of going to a separate slide, I'm just going to do it all on this slide right here. Let's see, on the left-hand side, um, I'm going to um, uh, solve for the, the tension in... Uh, wire 2 and T2, and then on the right-hand side, we'll try to break that down and solve for a tension in wire 1 right here. Remember, these are two different wires, and so they're going to be two different tensions. Um, one thing to point out, if it was one wire, if this was all one thing, then it would have to be true that the tension would be equal all through here, but it isn't. It's two different wires, so two different tensions, okay? So what's the main assumption right here? <coughs> excuse, excuse me. Well, is this flower pot moving? No, it's not. And so it's in translational equilibrium. So we can assume that the net force on the flower pot, um, pot right here, equals zero newtons. So we can say the forces that are acting in the x direction or the forces that are acting in the y direction, all of them have to equal up to zero. We certainly have a force acting in the y direction right here. Now here it's labeled W for weight, but we know that weight can be more specifically indicated as mg, right? In fact, I'm going to cross this one out right here because I don't want it to, to think there's two forces acting downwards. There's one force, the weight force, and that original one that was labeled there was perfectly fine, but mg is the way we're going to indicate that. Okay, so mg, the weight of um, that flower pot being caused by the acceleration of gravity, wants to bring it down. Well, what force is acting against um, that to hold it up. So let's, see our, let's draw our flower pot right here on the side. All right, and mg is acting downwards. Remember, for the y direction, for, I can't cross my f, there we go. For y direction, <coughs> the net force in the y direction has to equal zero newtons, right? So therefore, there has to be some force in the y direction, balancing out the downward pull of gravity. Um, well, what is that? 
There's no Y component of this tension right here. That's not doing anything to support it, at least vertically. But there is some component of this wire right here that has a Y component, right? We've got tension in the Y direction. And it's also true that that wire has some sort of tension in the X direction as well. Now, the X direction is not holding it up, but this is right here. So we can say that um, for the Y direction, the forces that are acting in the Y direction to keep this flower pot stationary and not moving or not accelerating are Ty positive and the weight force, or mg, in the negative. All right, so we could actually write that down as a, as a component force statement. Net force on the pot as components we could describe as being Ty, uh, I should say T2y, right? I'm sorry, T2, because this is all T, this is all tension 2. Um, so it's this wire we're dealing with right here. This would be T1. So T2y is acting upwards and then minus mg because the weight force is acting downwards right here. And since this statement is, um, uh, is equal to this statement up here, right? Let me change the color right here. Make it orange. Since that is equal to that, we can say, okay, great. Then both of these statements are equal, so that has to balance out to be zero. After all, this is in translational equilibrium. Um, so it should be pretty easy to solve for ty. All right, just move the so t sorry t2y has to equal the weight force. Right, it has to balance out the weight force. And what is the weight force? Right there. All right, well, the weight force is mg. It's the mass of the flower pot. That's 6.2 kilograms. That's a kg right there. Times gravity, 9.81 meters per second squared. All right. So that means the y component, ty, or I should say t2y, is equal to um, 6.2 times 9.81. What do I get if I key that in? The value that is 60.8, 60.8 newtons. 60.8 newtons. All right, let's dot a line box that right there. That's helpful to us, but it's not the final answer. What is it, what's it actually asking us for? It's, got, it's asking us for the full value of the tension in this wire. All right, well, the tension in that wire is T2, right? Um, and we have the Y component of it, and we know the angle that this wire is angled at right there. That's 40 degrees right there. Okay, so we have the, we have the, um, we have the angle. We have what really winds up being the, the opposite, right, the opposite of that angle. And we're solving for the hypotenuse right there. So if we say the sine, um, the sine of 40 degrees equals T2 over T, uh, oops, sorry, all the way around. It's the opposite over the adjacent, right? So it's T2 or T2Y, T2 y, T2, the Y component over T2. Man, that's getting really tiny down there. Sorry, um, I'm running out of space. Let's see if I can, I'm gonna see if I can do something real quick here. Give us some more space, can I do that? Yeah, look at that, awesome. <laughs> okay. Um, then we can say, all right, well, we're solving for tension in line two, right? That's what that is in the, the bottom right there. So let's just move our T2 over and up and divide by our sine of 40. So tension in line two is going to be T2y divided by the sine of 40 degrees. Well, we know our T2 in the y, um, y direction, right, the Y component. So that's 60.8 Newtons and our sine of 40 is um, sine of 40, sine of 40 degrees. So what is the tension in um, uh, in line two? So 60.8 divided by sine 40, I get 94.6, 94.6 newtons. That's what we get for our tension in line two. We did that by assuming that all the, um, this whole system is not moving. Therefore, we know this downward force has to have a vertical component um, upwards to balance it out. 
And so, so this is the only line that is supporting any kind of, or creating kind of a vertical support, then we basically say we found the Y component of that, which lets us find the full tension of that right there. Okay, well for T1 then, all right, or for, for the X direction, okay, we're still in translational equilibrium. Is this pot swinging left or right? No, it's not. So we can say that the net force in the X direction equals zero newtons as well. All right, so we have a force in the x direction right here. We have an x component of that force. This has to be balanced out by the tension in this wire, right? Now let's call uh, this direction positive and this direction negative right there. So therefore our statement, or you might say our component statement of the forces in the x direction, component X maybe, you can call it that, would be T1, tension in 1, minus T, actually I should, I should call it uh, T2X, right? Minus, I'll even write that in green so you, minus T2X, right? Because this wire, tension 2, has a Y component and an X component. The X component has to be balanced out by this line right here. If this line were not there to create that tension, then the, the, the flower pot would swing down to the left because Tx is pulling it that way. But this T1 is holding it in place. So first of all, let's find out what T2x is. All right, for T, let's do capital T, T2x, what do we know what that, that is? Well, T2 itself, and I'm gonna go back to just blue here for a second. Um, T2 equals 94.6 newtons, all right? And uh, we know that, uh, see so T2x, and we have the angle right here, the angle is 42 degrees, so we can say that the um, cosine, right, because it's adjacent, Tx is a, T2x is adjacent to that angle, cosine of 40 equals, I'll keep this in green, um, T2x over the hypotenuse, right? Just T2, T2, all right, so T2 in the X direction is going to have to be equal to, sorry, I keep switching back and forth to different colors, <laughs> uh, T2 cosine 40 degrees, okay, so I'm just going to stay with blue here, so T2 in the X direction is, what is our tension in line 2, that's 94.6, right? 94.6 newtons times a cosine of 40 degrees. 94.6 cosine 40, I get 72.5, 72.5 newtons. Let's dot a line box that. And why? Why is that important? To Because, look up here, all right, if the net force in the x direction is zero, all right, and T1 minus T2 equals zero as well, then we can say the tension on line one has to be equal to the tension in um, the X component of T2. So basically, that's gonna be our 72.5 Newtons. And that's our tension in line one. All right, so the assumption here is that in any direction, all the forces that are created have to balance out. All right, we took this weight and we said there has to be a vertical component of T2. We use that to find what T2 is. We use T2 to find out what the X component of T2 is. And then we said, uh oh, okay, there has to be a T1 here balancing out the X because they have to balance out to zero as well, which they do. And so using those assumptions, we can find out what the tension is in each of these two lines right here. So that's example 612. I was thinking about going on to the next example in this video, but I think for the sake of time, I'll just stop right now and I'll save that for a separate video. So thank you for watching and I'll see you on that next one.